But well, we thanks are. for. I I was eating soup and I didn't think I'd finish the soup in time, <laughs> but I ate that soup quick. You didn't have to do that. Well, I didn't mean. I mean, I just eat quick. I'm just like do I'm you, an expedient guy that way. Did you use a straw? Uh, <laughs> or did it did it have peas? Did it have peas in it? <laughs> no, it was clam soup. Uh, wait, clam? No, that's disgusting sounding. It's the SETI Vimco Show. Other podcasts tremble in fear when they see this podcast is impervious to bullets. So, hey, it's the SETI Vimco <laughs> Show, the show where we talk about the travesties and humor of high school <laughs> in real life Wait. and in movies. And our guest host today is friend of the show, New York Times bestseller. George O'Connor. That's fucking right. I'm back, everybody. <laughs> George is just on a... I mean, man. John's on what? a little sabbatical. Oh, okay. I'm like, He'll no, be my back. George is right. He'll be back. John so, takes but, these mysterious sabbaticals, but I'm, I'm glad that I always get the chance to kind of come in and, like, you know, try to fill his shoes unsuccessfully. He and I have different sizes. Me too. <laughs> entirely, but, yeah. Later, we'll talk about TV pilot for... Power Pack, which I don't, want, I don't want to get wait. into it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get into it later. <laughs> Remember that there's a time on this show that I picked. I pick movies with no research sometime, and I picked a movie called Summer Camp, and John and I watched it. We're like, oh, this is a Skinamax, basically a yeah. soft porn movie, and I didn't realize it. Well, Power Pack, similarly, I thought it was like <laughs> a TV movie pilot, but I guess it was just made for kids on the on afternoon or, a, or Saturday morning, it seems like. Wait, no, it was a pilot. For like prime time? Actually, you know, Tim, you mentioning it for kids makes a lot of sense. I was reading it was it was a pilot for kids. So now I feel it still, oh. I still feel, oh, it wasn't good, but I still feel no. like, okay. Well, spoilers, everybody. <laughs> but before we I'll do that. I'll say this. Wait, wait. Yeah? Since I'm the official Marvel go-to guy here mm-hmm. now, this has become my shtick. I will place this with Spider-Man being my fave and <laughs> Generation X having hurt me in ways I don't feel like revisiting. I will place Power Pack in between the two. Wow. Spoilers. Where does the Hulk go? Hulk TV show. I don't know. I have to revisit that. I bet you that sucks, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I loved it as a kid, but <laughs> I bet you that's a really terrible show nowadays. That's the one that uses footage from... Duel, Steven Spielberg's first TV movie. Do you know this whole story? Wait, yeah, they, they wait, just no. stole the footage to make to have Bruce Banner be in a, you know, a, in a car and the other guy in a truck, and they just were like, "We'll use this footage. It'll save money." Wait, um, why is Bruce Banner in a truck? No, I think he's in the car. If you remember the movie, I mean, yeah, he's yeah, the set I, upon. Well, they just, I don't know, I don't remember. Wait a second. In the Bruce, in the Hulk TV show, it's David Banner, by the way, David in the show. Banner. Does he get his powers from being in a car accident? No, no, no. This isn't the pilot. You remember? Oh, the, this is just an episode. And Steven Spielberg oh. sued them. Like, you can't use footage from my dual movie <laughs> before we get to the the Marvel stuff. And uh, did you, you have anything you want to talk about in the new year? Or uh, I sent I sent well, you something to talk about, but you have something to talk about before that. No, wait, what did you send me to talk about? <laughs> Do you not get any of my emails? <laughs> I sent so, you a strange news story. Oh, yes, you did. And do you know what I'm going to say about it? I, are so, you going to compare it to the just announced movie, the last movie starring <laughs> Ray Liotta, Cocaine Bear? <laughs> are Tell you going to talk about that? Yeah, I will. Do, we'll get to that. Okay. But the first thing that this story I sent George is Bear Attacks Rudolph. That is the headline. And yeah. there's video of a bear attacking an inflatable deer. But he fucks it up. Two things wrong with the headline and that film: the deer, inflatable deer, is white. Rudolph was brown, and that that <laughs> that that deer had a black nose. It wasn't even red. Oh, all what's, right. What's happened to journalism in this country? That was not what Rudolph. <laughs> which Rudolph? Do, I mean, which reindeer do we think it was? <laughs> the comet, or Cupid, or Donder, or Blitzen, or. <laughs> Something or Nixon? Who I was hope it? Blitzen. Blitzen. He had a lot. Blitzen. He had a lot of problems. Oh, what was Blitzen's problems? Cocaine. Yeah, that's why he's white. <laughs> he's just dusted with coke, and that's what led to Cocaine Bear. 
I mean, anyway, so I just people, noticed that. I, I recommend people see this video. It only takes like 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. I would say it's less of an attack, more of just an instant maul. Like that, right. that reindeer <laughs> doesn't stay. It's not like it, it doesn't put up a fight. And, and if I may be so indelicate, he comes at it from behind in a way that I'm thinking maybe he's not attacking it. Maybe mm-hmm. he's trying to mate with it. He thought it was Leo DiCaprio. <laughs> Wait, so in The Revenant, you think the yes. bear was trying to mate? With... <laughs> that changes everything. <laughs> I thought somebody else said that to me. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> what if Leo got pregnant and gave birth to a half man, half bear? Jeez. Would that have been a better movie? I asked you what's happened, what went on with you this week. <laughs> well, I just, <laughs> at the time of this recording, folks, I'm going to let you in a little secret. You're listening to this in the new year, but it's still the old year. Mm-hmm. The old sucky year. And I just came back from Florida. And, right. uh, yeah. For New Year's. I don't know. Yeah, for New Year's, of course. No. <laughs> for another, I was in Florida for a book festival. And uh, it was hot muggy and uh i probably have a good story to share but Wait. nothing's coming to mind oh i was gonna say you can't yeah. name names no i mean i could get into that shit but no one wants to hear that stuff uh i can name names i was at the book fair right. 10 years ago all right name some <laughs> names i did uh, i think i told this story so that's what's oh, happening on this podcast maybe i'm just i was at the book fair for fahrenheit they sent me and I swear this is true. Number one, I was in the uh, Carol, who who does the graphic novel about her father in the war. Not Carol Hitler, right? No. Okay, that anyway, would be a fucked up story. <laughs> I was in the car with her when they brought us from the airport. It was this crowd of people walking in front of us, and she knew it was like Trump's people because he had a book there. And then when we mm. went inside, there was all these women crowded around a door they're like, and they were looking at us. I, I kind of gathered they were faking it because I saw this twice. They were gathered and they're like, look, let's go, look what's going on. They're just like, there's no one there. And they're all acting all excited. And it was uh, book, uh, Trump's book, whatever was out in 2009. He had a presence there. And the reason I say I think they were paid to act that way, later I went by the grandson of uh, Bram Stoker. The Stokers. He was also at the book fair. Yeah, because he wrote a book, and there were so women. So the granddaughter of Hitler and the grandson of <laughs> of Bram Stoker were at the book fair. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, he also had women who were like, "Look, look who it is," and they were all excited. And they, when I came by, people came by. They looked at the people and like, "Look, it's Bram Stoker's grandson. He wrote a book. Come on." Was this at the airport? No, this was in a hotel. And I'm like, "You girls oh. are paid to act excited. I can tell." And I, I saw Wait, that more than once. And uh, were they excited for you? Were you like, you're no. the great great grandson <laughs> of Alexander Hamilton? No. And you never saw these people, really? That are paid no. to act excited? I saw them no. twice that year. I know they're paid. Mm. Mm. I don't think people get excited for me anymore, Tim. Get excited? I think what? I, I get excited for my books anymore. I think I've hit that stage of my career. Oh, come on. I come on stage like, oh, it's uh, New York Times bestselling author George O'Connor. I've heard him on mo- many podcasts. And then they just kind of yawn. I'm like, is his dad anyone famous? His grandson <laughs> grandson of anybody? No. Nah, oh, screw okay. it. You're going somewhere with this. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me this is what happened. No. This is sad. Wanna... Man, I, must... I had stuff I wanted to talk about. Well, let, let me talk. Look, There's something you want yeah, to hear. Yeah, you talk. You talk. You talk. Nothing much happened. At the end of this past year, because we're in 2023 now. Yes, of course. We did have, you're a person that likes all Star Wars. I like Star Wars if it's good. I don't know if I like all Star Wars. And I liked Andor. Oh, you saw that? Yeah. I have not yet. I heard it's really good. I had you on the show to talk about Andor, and you didn't watch it. Man, let me tell you. You didn't watch any of it? I haven't seen any Star Wars since Boba Fett. Solo? The prequel. Yes. yes. Okay. I had some problems with that. <laughs> we'll okay. I don't, I don't. All right. Let's so, talk about that. I wanted to. This is the pre the solo. For those who don't know yeah. about Star Wars, Han Solo is in Star Wars, and they made a prequel with a different <laughs> Wait, actor playing Solo. Wait, does anyone not know who Han Solo is? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Okay. 
I was hoping the sequel would be two Wookiees. Okay. Two Wookiees, and they're in the middle of me. <laughs> they're in the minimum Falcon, Millennium Falcon, <laughs> and they're doing the the Kessel Run in twelve parsecs. Is that what it is? Okay. Yep, I think so. And their engines have a terrible radiation accident, even though they make right. the run. And uh-huh. one of these Wookies gets radiation poisoning, and all his hair falls off. And and that's Han Solo. Han Solo, Han Solo okay. is actually a, Wookie, a hairless Wookie. We never knew it. When, when <laughs> Chewie talks, that's why he understands yeah. Wookie talk. And okay. when Chewie talks to him, he's always ta- calling him names like the hair, a hairless Wookie, but no one, no one else can understand Chewbacca, mm. so they don't know he's insulting him all the time. Is Han Solo a Wookie dwarf? Yeah, yeah. Or is he's it just, just the hair one. makes him so much bigger? He's a female Wookiee. That's what a female Wookiee Ooh. looks like. See? It's short. Oh, shit. I like this. Not that I'm sexist. Just in nature, sometimes the female is smaller. Except for spiders. Right. And lions? Yeah. Uh, hmm. No, I think the males are bigger. They're just lazy. And hulks. Yeah, hulks. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> she, <laughs> hulks, you know, it depends on the artist. Uh, I think eagles. I think birds. Sometimes the ladies are bigger. True. Yeah. True. Uh, let's drag how queens. about this podcast ladies are bigger. drag queens can i say yep, that those ladies are bigger yeah nothing no against. that's still a term okay um if there's a uh a normal sized human female and she's married to a dwarf male she's probably bigger probably. um let's list all the things in nature where the females are bigger <laughs> i was trying to talk about star uh, wars <laughs> uh so let's do star wars guess uh, guess what Yoda. doll guess what doll yeah. got into the toy hall of fame do you know this um you should know this doll um, my question, I should know. my question is misleading. I know. Uh, Barbie. I mean, she was probably already there, right? No, you're going to be mad. He man, he man was inducted. All those dolls. All right, first off, you fucker. <laughs> it's called an action figure. I'm fucking leaving. It. Do I have to write another long letter that you finally read after five yes. months? Good Lord. All right. Let's get to this movie because we talked about nothing for half an hour. <laughs> Hopefully you could salvage 10 minutes out of that. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, so I'm going to give you a clean break. Clean break? Because I said this earlier and I feel it bears repeating. Yes. Since I, this is now my third time, fourth time on the show, mm-hmm. third time as guest host. Right. And it's kind of become a thing at this point, I guess, that we do old Marvel properties. Yeah. That's and how I, I lured to, you to the show. Yeah, you're like, let's talk about old Marvel stuff. I don't 100% know I even knew this one existed. You didn't? But I was going to say it for... I, I was going to say you're I younger kind, than me. Maybe you read this. I kind of remembered hearing it was going to happen. And I don't think I realized it did. Oh, Do you okay. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I remember them... Because like, Stan Lee would always write. He's like, guess what, true believer? There's going to be a Spider-Man movie. I'm like, okay, cool. And, like, it didn't happen for, like, 30 years. No. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I did see a photo once of, like, the kids mm-hmm. that were going to be in the Power Pack movie. But I didn't know it actually ever got made. And I will say, speaking of Spider-Man, speaking of Power Pack, yes. and speaking of the dread thing that was Generation X, my personal ranking, with Generation X being the absolute nadir, the worst, huh. and Spider-Man being surprisingly good, and it makes me genuinely sad that that did not become a giant hit like Hulk, <laughs> I will put Power Pack squarely in between the two of them okay right. oh, where's the hulk i just got i asked you never answered that before <laughs> uh, wait, wait, where's the hulk in that list i don't know <laughs> i have to rewatch the hulk i hulk might be better than spider-man for all i know you know the after the hulk there was you know there was dr strange and as a kid i remember yeah. there was a show called power man i swear but he was a white guy with electrical powers racist but it was it was like based on marvel comics i'm like what Wait, really? Yes, I, I'm going to find said it. That? I'm going to find it. Okay. Yeah, it was all part of the whole stuff Stan Lee was getting out there. I think I remember Man. reading Stan Lee say, yeah, they were getting kind of far away from the concept at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. There was, it's like a whole weird Wild West version of Marvel. Like They were just like throwing out mm-hmm. any deal. They're like, yeah, yeah, do it. And I want to follow so, up when we did Spider-Man. I said, maybe they didn't invent spandex yet, but I looked it up later and they invented spandex in 1959. Wait, really? Yep. Maybe it was hmm. expensive then, but that's when it was invented. That is that is a, that means the entirety of the Silver Age, pretty much. Spandex is already a thing. Yeah, I think Mary Mary Tyler Moore wore them on her show. You know, that was a thing, right? She wore slacks 
on, on Dick Van Dyke um, show. I, I know we're talking about things you don't know about. I do. John's laughing you know at you from home. <laughs> Can I tell you, I was doing the New York times crossword puzzle the other day and I, there was a five down that was spin off of Mary Tyler Moore show. <gasps> And me, the fourth letter was the only one I had. It was D, and I but, wrote in Maud. No, it was Rhoda. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But I was so excited, I nearly screenshot it and sent it to you. <laughs> but I was going a little bit further. I'm like, none of this makes sense. And I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> Mary Tyler Moore isn't part of that whole weird universe. No, it's not. And I, I corrected myself, and I was like, some part of my brain. I've never seen the Mary Tyler Moore show. I've certainly never seen Rhoda, oh, but some part of my brain's like, you fool, it's Rhoda. It's Rhoda. <laughs> and I, I cried. So I didn't send you that screenshot. Oh, John is at home punching something. I, don't know. I mean, is that what his sabbatical's about? Does John take time <laughs> off from the show to beat stuff? No, he's punching things because of how much you don't know about Maud and Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> I mean, let's do an episode like where we talk about there's got to be a mod episode that deals with high school in some way. Right. Um, does she go to a high school reunion or something? I believe she does. Then let's I'm inviting myself on as a guest. But also they, let's they do an use, episode. They use the high school to put on a burlesque show in one episode and the high school. Why aren't we watching this? <laughs> And the whole thing is about I want, this is a high school. Yeah. This 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 uh, this is not appropriate for the high school. And Maud's like, oh, it's an old format entertainment. It's called Bo- Bodville Burlesque. This is really something that happened? Yes. And, and the, the, her Tim, daughter does a burlesque dance. You've mentioned the daughter doing the burlesque dance. Yes. I, I know this. She's in Swamp and Thing. I know, the movie. And she's also the voice. Oh, is she? No. I think she was the voice of Catwoman in the Batman the series. Oh. Um, I'm not saying her name I because be I, I'm just forgetting. Adrian. It's Adrian Barbeau. Barbeau. Yes. Ah, now I have become the mod man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Adrian Barbeau. She was in The Fog. She was in uh, a few movies. She was in Creepshow, wasn't she? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think she was the, the terrible wife of the guy who finds the monster under the stairs and she gets eaten by the monster. I forget. I forget yeah, the I first. Know. I remember Ted Danson being buried in the beach, and I forget the other ones. Yeah, he becomes a zombie. He gets killed by the guy from Naked Gun. Yes. Yeah, so is this something about... Good times. Here's your, isn't somebody like, happy birthday, here's your birthday cake? Is that him? Or is that a different one? Mm, uh, the zombie shows up going, happy birthday, and he... Is that what that, that episode? There might be. There is a zombie. Hey, you know what else there was a zombie in? Power Star Pack. Wars. Okay, Power no, Pack. There was. There was. <laughs> Good, I want to talk about the zombie. I have... Wait, wait, let's, let's introduce this. Two page notes. We didn't say right, anything yeah, yeah. about Power Pack. Power Pack All right, yeah. was a comic book, came out in 1984, and it was Ooh. young kids that had powers. Like, I think the oldest is 12. That's why okay. this counts. <laughs> he goes to high school. All right. Um, I never read the comic, and I thought George was a little younger than me. Maybe he read some of Power Pack. Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. Go back to the first episode I was a guest on. I talk about my friend. Yes. He and I were avid readers of Power Pack. Oh, my God. I legit was a big fan of Power Pack growing up. Well, you're the right age. I was older, and I'm like, what is this? It tied in with the X-Men very heavily. They saw they were part of the Mutant Massacre. Did you know that? No, I was not reading anymore. There was literally an issue where they're down in the sewers of New York City as the Marauders are slaughtering <laughs> characters they know. There was a, <laughs> there's a shot in that comic of this character, the unfortunate named Scalp Hunter, shooting a person in the face right in front of these little kids. I'm like, wow. these kids are fucked up for life. And they're like 12. These kids are like 12, 8, 9. I think, I think it's 12 to 6. Yeah. Or 12 to 5 even. Yes. Yeah, so this uh, property... They yep. they made into a pilot for a TV show, which I think was meant for the kids in the morning. So I feel a little makes all the sense in the world. I feel yeah. a little bad about what we're gonna say, but it was still not good. <laughs> still, still, ter- I know it was for kids, but <laughs> wait, Tim. What? Really quickly before you go any further, I've already been on the record saying I thought Spider Man was the best, and I thought Generation X was the worst. Mm-hmm. With this in the middle, where would you place it with the three Marvel shows we've watched? Oh, down at the bottom, because at least Generation X was... Worse than Generation X? Yes. <laughs> wow, <laughs> okay, all right. Man, all right, that's interesting. We're going to fight. I looked up all the actors in this, and I'm not being mean. I'm just saying they never did anything else I could find. Did you? Two of them did. 
two characters went on to pretty significant careers. Yeah. Minor characters, though. Uh, one of the friends that dares Jack to go into the house. Yes. Does some stuff. Eddie. And the Eddie and the girl who asks Alex out. Yes. Is yes, a yes. fairly well-known actress. Yes. And the yeah. actor who plays their father, he appeared on Star Trek Deep Space Nine playing a Vulcan. Oh, I mean, man, really? wait, wait, I'm sorry. Star Trek Discovery playing a Vulcan a recently. Vulcan. Recently. Yes. Yeah, Star Trek Discovery is the new show. Fun so. fact about the Power Pack comic book. Mm-hmm. The characters of the parents, I want to say Mr. and Mrs. Power, because I don't remember their names, were based very transparently on the create one of the creators, uh, Louise, Louise Simonson, Simonson, was Mrs. Power, okay. and Walt Simonson was Mr. Power. And I was ah. very disappointed upon watching this. The two actors they hired to play them looked nothing like the Simonsons. Yeah, Almost sure. threw my computer down across <laughs> the room in disgust. <laughs> Tim. Well, is this because uh, they didn't have the third eye that Walt has? So I'm, yeah, because of course everyone knows Walt Simonson is a horribly deformed human being <laughs> with three eyes. We know it's not six true. tentacles. Um, Tim, can you name the superhero names that do not appear anywhere in this of and their powers? Sure. Of the four power children, Density Lad, he can make himself dense or in a gas. Right. Absolutely wrong, but yes. Okay. Uh, so far. There's. <laughs> There is uh, uh, the Flying Girl. She can fly. Flying Girl. Okay. Yeah. Which she does not do in this at all. And uh, that's not her name either. Well, her, her name is uh, Hummingbird. Mm. No. Okay. No, and no, then right. there's the youngest, a, a possessed child <laughs> who makes the worst <laughs> scary faces. She has the power of Satan. <laughs> we'll get to it. She seems to want to destroy yeah. things. Yeah, there was some shit with her. All right. <laughs> so, all right. I'm just going to, because Tim is, a, as a power pack aficionado, who did not bother looking any of this up. This is working off my, like, 40-year-old <laughs> memories of this stuff. So the oldest brother, Alex, I'm pretty sure his superhero name was G. G-E-E. And he had the power of controlling gravity. He could uh-huh. float. Okay, yeah. He could make things super light and super heavy. He kind of maybe has that power in this. It's a little hard to tell. Each of these characters barely uses their powers, and they are cheap as fuck. Yeah. Then the oldest girl, who is the next oldest kid, is Julie. I think her name was Lightspeed. She uh, could fly and was like a rainbow. Yes. Which she doesn't fly in this, but she she they speed up film and she has a rainbow. Yep. Then there was there's, Jack. There's that agenda. <laughs> yeah, they were. What are they? You know, actually, Tim. I think now in Marvel Comics, the character is grown up, and I believe is gay. So hmm. maybe they were pushing it. Now that's that's stereotyping now. Just because, yeah, just because she makes a, a rainbow person. when she runs. She has a run. She flies. Flies. Sorry. Yeah, I don't think she runs. Uh, Jack, I think his name was Mass Master. He could become gas, and he could condense himself to be a super dense version of himself. He right. shrinks. Mm-hmm. But he was like very heavy when he did that. This he just kind of shrinks. Yes. And then Katie, <laughs> this the devil child. Right. <laughs> my, I loved her in this. Uh, Katie was called Energizer. Okay. And she had she was five years old in the comic, I think, maybe six. Has the power to disintegrate things and then fire destructive bolts of energy wow. out of the middle of her chest and blow up shit. No, yeah. her thing was like it was literally she would have to disintegrate stuff. Oh, okay. like so she going to fight and she would like disintegrate garbage. And I I mean, I remember her like disintegrating like I don't Some think people. she kills a person, but she does damage. Yeah, she she met, definitely fucks up people. Hmm. All right. And uh, yeah, in so, this. Yeah, we'll talk about her because she's she's interesting. They, they give I do know the origin because I've read about the book. They don't really they don't explain much about the or there's a there's a no. voiceover at the beginning, but an alien gives them. His powers. That's why they have powers, and the alien dies. Which yeah. did you notice? Because I watched this twice. They there's a voiceover. You see the mm-hmm. cosmos. You hear a voice saying, "He says ours is a vast universe, a wondrous creation of subtle beauty and awesome power." They never actually say he's an alien. No. I would have watched this and be like, "It's God." <laughs> <laughs> and he says, "Maybe he, it was." He, he gives. He gives the powers to these kids doesn't say why he says something about like kids are more innocent 
There's a great line I wrote it down too, where he says, power is a delicate force. And I looked up the word power. You know what a synonym for power is? Force. Yeah. So I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> this guy is a jerk. <laughs> so this nameless alien, we never see him. Maybe God gives the power children yeah, these this powers. Is great. Yeah. God gives yeah. God gives these kids these powers. Yeah. In the comic, it's a weird alien horse named Whitey. <laughs> who's, Just so you know. He's white. Just like he's, Rudolph. He's, yeah. <gasps> Tim, it all comes. <laughs> and he died when a cocaine bear attacked him. I love it. So I was excited for one thing. That's Because of the pr- pronunciation. They say they're going to go up. I, I saw his name in the credits. They're going to go up against the villain in, in this episode called Dr. Morbius. But I was thinking... Like Morbius, the character from Marvel Comics, the living vampire. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this will be cool. Morbius, the living vampire. I have, I have bad news for you. <laughs> it wasn't. I know. It was what? It was Mobius. Mobius. All right. All right. Power is a delicate force. They stop showing the stars. And then we zoom in into a subdivision, mm-hmm. a suburban subdivision. I'm sure I've seen in every movie of all filmed. And a super, it's very faux Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah. Like. It feels like this suburban sort of Spielberg thing you see. The music sounds like Spielberg ripoff music, but that's where the Spielbergian similarities end because this it doesn't look like Spielberg shot it. No. Well, not on the YouTube video we were watching. Yeah, bad quality, by the way. Shout out to Unlucky Assassin. Who Was that the one who you watched it on, the three parts? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> this was definitely like a sixth generation copy. Like the kids were kind of amorphous blobs with eyes almost it was so do yeah but i don't think we really missed anything well who wrote it was jason brett all right the only, who's he? the only other things he wrote i could find were <laughs> tattooed teenage alien fighters from beverly hills <laughs> he wrote an episode of forever night if you remember that show mm. that's the one about a vampire that fights crime right, right? nice uh that was all i could find about him well, that's better than the guy who worked on Spider-Man that apparently never did anything ever again, right? No. So, but I am sensing a trend in these early Marvel shows. Oh, before I forget, Gre- yeah. Greg Swanson plays this Dr. Morbius. Uh-huh. And he did voices for the Ewok TV show. What? Yep. And he did right. well, he did extra voices on Elf. He did all sorts of voices on stuff. Holy shit. All right. Did you ever hear His about all the nightmare it was to work on Elf? You know about these stories. Alf, you're talking the alien life form? That, the, like, the puppet the, show? Hey, are you kids? That, no. I. Oh, it sounds like it was everybody hated working on it because the puppet was getting <laughs> the best lines and because it took 24 hours to film an episode because they had to move where the puppet's going to hide. Oh, you should look it up. Oh, well, that's, With I mean, The last Alf. day of filming, the father, the guy that plays the father, he just he just walked off stage, walked, got in his car and went home like no goodbyes, no, no parties. <laughs> <laughs> I read this. I don't know if it's true, but... <laughs> That's how horrible it was. I love that. Um, so Alex, so the guy's name is Swanson. Yeah, I looked him up. Greg, and, Greg Swanson. Right. He was Take a he was in Meatballs. Me, he was in the first Meatballs. Really? Yep. He he looks exactly like Orson. He Wilson. does. <laughs> All right. So their names are so Julie. Back to Power Pack. Julie, Alex. Wait, Alex, Jack, Julie. Who am I missing? Katie. Katie. Who is the baby? They also call Kitty Cat. Well, I'm going to say this again, as a big fan of the comic, mm-hmm. uh, there were a couple of, aside from the fact that they, they never say any of their superhero names and their powers have been tweaked to, for budgetary reasons, there was a couple big differences from the comic that I immediately noticed. In the comics, the powers live in New York City so that they can interact with everybody. Mm-hmm. But there is a line mentioned at the front, they have just moved to a new place. It's Florida. So I'm like, oh, cool. It's like they just moved away from the city because they, mm-hmm. I don't know, they kept getting involved in mutant massacres and shit. It's Florida, George. Is it? Do they say there's that? There's no elevators. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. No, yeah, and that would, they would buy 1991. That's right. So you're right. It's, it's definitely Florida. So they've just moved to Florida from New York City. Um, also, the parents know they have powers. True. Which I was kind of surprised by. Like, there is a utterly bizarre scene where Jack, the the youngest brother, but like the middle child drops his retainer down the sink and shrinks and oh. goes down like a piece of hair yes. or something to get it. I was going to say, do you know, have you ever looked in your drain? I would uh, never, 
unset no and like once you're i don't care if you can shrink and get your retainer <laughs> that retainer needs to be burned and i'm watching this and then his dad comes and pulls it out i'm like he's looking right at his son he's like jack right. i'm like oh, they know their kids have powers yep which so, from a storytelling standpoint to be serious for one minute yeah that's not good you're you're, no. you're always told if you're going to tell a story with kids get rid of the parents somehow Yep, and they live with them, so it's always going to be. We got to go to the store. You guys, you guys be good. We're going to the hotel will, tonight. You guys be good. Yeah, and like the ho- they are. The hotel with the this show is. <laughs> Just get my joke. Mommy's <laughs> getting a mommy's getting a special massage. <laughs> I always have to have some excuse. There was very little, like what's the word? There was very little conflict here. No. Like the parents knew they had powers. The kids are new at a school, and I figured at least one of them would be the victim of bullying of these four oh, yeah. kids. None of them were. There, like, there was Eddie. Eddie was a bully. He kept smacking his friend in the head. But He kept smacking but his friend not, Harlan. Not like, powers. <laughs> no. Man, let me tell you. The, the, so, all right. Let's set this up. There's not much to set up, George. No, there's not. They go, Al, they go to it's the... A, it was a half hour. <laughs> they find, Wait, they, but they, Alex is the nerd who gets yes. picked up by a girl... Not Julie, he gets picked up. Picked up. She's all like, "Oh yeah." He's all. T- he says with Newton's law of gravity. She's like, "I like this guy." Yes. She says, "Here's my number." Mm-hmm. He literally gets picked up. Yep. Julie has new friends and she wants to meet new people. She is completely absent from the action. She is. They. It's insane. Well, you have one episode. She has the. You have four kids. Yeah. <laughs> she cleans. That's her big thing. She. She had the rainbow. The house. These are kids. So, see, I can't make jokes, George. I was going to say, she's got the rainbow powers. <laughs> she ran off. This is 1991. They couldn't show what she was up to. They wouldn't allow that. What was she up to, Tim? Just meeting her girlfriend. That's all I mean. Nothing bad. But, th- but then, like, these are kids. Uh, I, can't, yeah. I can't be making that joke. These, these little... Well, you know what? If it makes you feel better, Tim, all these kids are, like, in their 40s now. If they're still alive. Now I feel better. Yeah, so... And let me tell you... Uh-huh. We yeah. got a microscope from a rummage sale. I had a microscope when I was a kid. I don't, okay. I don't know if you, you're, you're nerdy. You had one? No? Uh, yeah, I think I did. So I'm going to tell you, I scraped inside the the drain of our bathroom sink once. I put it on a oh, slide no. and I was horrified. I'm like, there's things alive in there. It's uh, Wait, you you could actually see living things inside I saw things your... moving on that slide. Oh, It was a good microscope. Come on, you can see yeah, stuff. It is a good microscope. Yeah, it's gross though. I mean, didn't, like, what did you have? Did you have... Uh, uh, Lego microscope? No, I had a microscope that had a few mind. pre-prepared slides, and I shattered all the slides by zooming. Because you did it wrong. I remember that you're supposed to. I did it wrong. Go slow. Go close to it while you watch it, and then you stick your eye up yep. and go backwards. For all no, you I people listening at home, in. otherwise you're going to break your slides. Microscope etiquette. Before we get into the story, Tim, I do want to address <laughs> one thing. Yes. All right. That when we're introduced to the youngest daughter, Katie. Who you already you already talked about is presumably possessed by the devil because we see her. She's slumped in a chair, mm-hmm. generating a ball of energy above her hand and staring at the neighbor kids. At some yeah, did you understand? Like I didn't. with like it seemed like she's gonna kill them. Did you actually understand those kids are really there? Well, yeah, yeah. I just was confused. I thought, I thought like, what is up with her? I thought because she was talking about missing her friends. Well, because we see them later. They come and ask her yeah, to stay outside. I figured it out when they return. Oh, okay. But at that scene, I'm like, is are they Is she summoning them? Is she, is she <laughs> making like holograms of her friends back home that she misses? Oh. And the fact that she was actually just observing these kids while making a ball of energy yes. to me speaks to the fact that she was actually contemplating murdering those kids. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Because spoilers She is the only power kid in this thing to take a life. She kills somebody in the course of this thing. uh, Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. She, in this children's show, where almost nothing happens, where one of the power kids is shunted off, running off with her girlfriend or whatever, when the three kids get involved in the meat of the story, she kills something. That's right. I forgot. Yeah. All right. So So let's talk about this. Well, this plot is... So simple. Let's explain it. They go to a haunted house. Right. There's a haunted house. Yeah, Jack Jack goes to the haunted house and impresses his friends. And they take a medallion it's, that's on the floor. Oh, well, yeah, well let's... Like the Staff of Ra. 
I know this is for kids, but they sneak into a haunted yeah. house. There's there's a casket with a dummy that jumps up. There's a skeleton. There's a, <laughs> yeah. a guillotine. <laughs> it's the best haunt. It's Tim, when you were a kid, did you ever sneak into an abandoned house in your neighborhood? No, no, I don't think I did that. Oh, really? We had, in my neighborhood, there was a house that somebody must have died who didn't have family. It was just a house that everything was still in there. Wow. And we would sneak into there, and it was pretty scary and cool. Like, it's amazing. Like, there was chunks of the floor that had rotted away. It was pretty dangerous, Ooh. but, you know, it was the 70s. You did this stuff. Yeah. And you always wish the house would be like this. Right. This house was like, but like the, from a little that Little Rascals episode, remember, with the skeleton the haunted house no <laughs> the only little rascals i remember is where spanky's mom gets her clothes pulled up because that woke something in me <laughs> i don't remember that episode what happens wait really <laughs> spanky has to go on stage for something oh, that's and like right. he's it's crazy the curtain goes up and it rips her dress yeah off. that's right and i'm like as a little kid i'm like what yeah wait, what's what? going on oh my let's watch that one again yeah <laughs> Cut all that out. Cut all that out. Don't really cut it out. <laughs> so, they... so, yeah, Jack and his friends, uh, who's the one kid that became famous, maybe, and Harlan, who has the least amount of personality and charisma I've ever seen a childhood actor, <laughs> go in there. They they see some scary shit. Orson they Welles. See this Orson painting Welles in the of, wall. It's straight up Orson Welles. <laughs> And then they steal, like, the Staff of Ra from Raiders right. of Lost Ark, which is laying on the floor. And that kid and then, that goes to steal, which is, what's his name? Uh, Eddie and Harlan are the oh the the, the power Powers. kid is Jack. He has a Todd McFarlane Spider Man his his drawer in his bedroom. Did you notice that? You're right. Yep. I did remember that. Yeah. All right. So he gets home. <laughs> he puts the amulet in the aforementioned drawer with the Todd McFarlane Spider Man, and then a voice says, "Give it back." What to does me. it say? Let's just give it back. Give to it me. back to me. Yeah. And he goes. Uh oh. Yes. <laughs> and and then that's the plot. Basically, Julie's gone. Julie runs off to hang out with her friends. Mm-hmm. Like literally rides her bike down the street very fast with rainbows, which yes. all the neighbors must have seen. Yeah. And then it becomes Alex, the guy who could lift stuff, and Jack, the guy who could shrink, and Katie, the little girl who was contemplating murdering the kids next door with energy bolts, go back into this house to return the amulet. Yep. And that's kind of the whole plot. And the one kid can lift things with his mind, yet they pick up Katie to make her put the amulet back on the, the picture of Orson Welles. And the whole time and she's she like, yelling, it's it burns. burning my hands. <laughs> and her brother's like, I don't care. Put that back. <laughs> I can't do it myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about like the this is the perils. This is the big action scene. They go inside the house again a second time. Uh <laughs> Jack gets attacked by a plastic skeleton that he yes. shrinks to get away from. Which, wait, wait. Uh, oh, Alex, sorry. yeah. Before the, the, a, a ghost comes to their door looking for that medallion first. Oh, I forgot. You're right. And when they yeah, open the, the front door, ghost. that little girl screams. I don't know if you saw her face she made. It was the worst. <laughs> yes. I know she's a kid. I wrote it. It was like a robot face. I wrote, I wrote down a note like worst scared face ever. <laughs> and you know what? I have to say. I liked that little girl. Like she, there was something that was very funny about her. Like she was too young to be being an actor for this. I yeah, think yeah. like, like I got real legit kid vibes off her. And like that made me wonder, like when she screams, I'm like, did they have to really scare her? Like, I don't think she knew that this was a TV show. Yeah, Cause she's like, she was pretty young. She was very like younger. It seems like younger than an average child actor. It was interesting. They cast that way. Uh, so, yeah, the ghost shows up, and then they're like, oh, are we going to put these back? Uh, Alex falls down a hole where there's, like, ghost skulls. He flies That's out. Right. Yeah, which was it's weird. It's like another dimension. I guess, yeah. And then Katie, <laughs> this is the part, the little girl, the five-year-old <laughs> girl, who, who is contemplating murdering the neighbors at one point, gets attacked by what seems to be a zombie but may just be a deformed person. Yeah. it was, And kills him with an energy bolt. Like, disintegrate. She points her finger... <laughs> And he gets disintegrated. I'm like, that child just committed murder. But maybe it was already dead. It might have been undead. <laughs> but I like to think if this had been picked up and gone to series, it would have been <laughs> them dealing with the repercussions of this five-year-old child continuously murdering people. <laughs> and they're always just covering up. That's the plot. It's like, oh, shit, we had a party. And Katie disintegrated Todd, the local bully. 
Gotta hide his sneakers. You're getting ahead of yourself. These are spin-off shows. Yep. So they give the medallion back. Um, but the kids at the end come and ask Katie go to play. Was it was it my bad copy or did those kids also look like to me, I was like, they're robots. Is this just me? Those kids sucked. <laughs> I also thought that they I they say they answer the kids that we first saw Katie, like who was watching, and they were actually in the backyard, not something she was manifesting. They answered the door like can your daughter come to play? Right. And Tim, I thought they said, I, I rewound it. I thought they said, can Jordana come to play? <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, these kids are so bad. This movie's so bad. They left in, they called the actor by her real name. Oh. Her real name is not Jordana. They say, they say daughter. Right. But I got pretty excited to think it was like they did the old call the actor by their real name and just leave it in. Cause you just don't give a shit. Uh, Julie think, comes back. Yes. She cleaned the house while they were gone because they just moved and she had to. Uh, what else? There was not much of an episode. There was a brief scene we didn't mention where the parents are somewhere. They Having left their very young children home alone and they see it's stormy, they're like, it's stormy. Should we be worried? I'm like, no, it's freaking rain. <laughs> right. <laughs> you idiots. I don't know what the father did. Uh, he was a scientist. Okay. They made a mention that he worked in – I don't remember why or when, <clears throat> but there was definitely a mention he worked in a physics thing or something because that's part of the reason why the Alex knew so much. Oh, and then the movie ends. The girl that gets Alex's phone number – She's too tall. When he's talking about – is she too tall? Well, I thought that's what you were going to say. Didn't you no, – did, that was she, the only drama in the whole episode. He, She got his phone number. She got up to walk away, and he's looking at her like, what? She was like to him six feet tall. Remember? And he goes, oh, oh great. That. Tall girls. Yeah, I didn't understand what yeah. I didn't understand why he said, oh, great. I figured maybe he just didn't like women. <laughs> maybe. I think he's <laughs> okay. prejudiced against tall women. Huh. I think this is a setup for in the future. Maybe he would learn how to use his powers on other people and he'd make her smaller. Huh? Maybe he would always levitate like a couple of inches off the ground. No, no he wasn't he the makes, one that could shrink. Yeah, he, he could shrink, right? No, that was the other brother. Oh, he can. No. No, yeah, the one that, that was the floaty the brother. The one that could Alex shrink is the one the girl gave the phone is Jack. number to. No, because you remember, Tim, I'm about to school you. <laughs> Alex gets the phone call from, I want her to say her name is Pam. It's in my okay. notes, but I can't find it right now. And he's talking in the phone. He goes, Mom, Jack got on the line. He's like, what? Because yeah. Jack was the bad boy. Yeah. All right. So he, he can float. Yep. I think yep. it was a setup to a future episode where he would get an extra gonna, long pair of pants, just tie the yeah. shoes to the pant legs i like it and he would float <laughs> and you just kick, oh my God. kick the legs along as if he were taller <laughs> they're empty though tim <laughs> that would actually be see this is i feel like a, a palpable sense of loss this didn't go to series it would have been not good but like yeah. stuff like that they would never do that would that. have been fun if you wrote it they would all right that was terrible Ah, do you want to say anything else about this? No. (laughs) (laughs) How about the part when uh, when Jack shrinks down and enters the house and he sees the giant mouse and he goes, "Oh man, Tyrannosaurus rat!" And then they do nothing with it. Yes. I'm like, that was a commercial break. They uh, didn't have the money for him to actually interact with the giant giant rat. I think it was a rat. You're right. It was. I think it was a rat. The only thing that would have helped was was is if. Two Wookiees showed up, and Ooh, the little wait. Katie burned all the hair off of one Wookiee, and it was on, on Solo. <laughs> then the show would be okay. What? <laughs> what if she burns all the hair off of Chewbacca? <laughs> Who is he beneath all that hair? Um, oh, what actor? Wow. Yeah. <sighs> that tall guy from Fleetwood Mac. Which one is he? Oh, is he Mick Fleetwood? Mick Fleetwood. Mick Fleetwood. <laughs> the yeah, guy the band is named after. Yeah, the guy. What's his the, name? Yeah. It is Mick Fleetwood. It literally is. <laughs> I know. Oh. R.I.P. Christina McVie. Just like in the band Fish, the lead singer's name is Fish. P. It's Joe P. Fish. Yeah. P. Yeah. <laughs> the P stands for Pooterhausen. And Hootie? Pooterhausen Who's Hitch. Hootie? Yeah. Uh, we know who Hootie is. Man, you, you bring up Hootie a lot. <laughs> I feel like. Are you going to go All Are right. you gonna go see this, this fifth Indiana Jones movie? Speaking of prequels and sequels. Uh, as the time of the recording, I know that the uh, trailer dropped today, but I've yet to have been able to watch it. Really? Oh, I get to tell yeah. you? 
He's an old man, I know it. and he goes up against yeah, well, Charles Manson. Wait, what? Because Charles Manson and has an artifact, so he goes. You're kidding. He goes me. to the ranch. Yeah, no. it's it's Indiana Jones, and, and he fights Leslie Van Houten. Yeah, Leslie Van Houten's there, and they watch Maude. <laughs> no, it wasn't on the air yet. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, what's another thing you mentioned on the show? <laughs> um... Wait, I'm not done explaining the Indiana Jones. Okay, okay. I don't want to tell you. Right. I don't want to tell you much more. Wait, are you being are you being serious? Of course. You're not being serious. No, it's not Charles Manson. You got my hopes up. That's what I want to see. Because he'll be yeah. he'd be alive. He'd be old. That'd be pretty funny to see him just fighting a bunch of dirty hippies living in the desert. Yeah. Yeah. They they dose him with LSD. That's the whole. Uh, oh man, he he's like I'm tripping balls. Or is he when he sees some supernatural stuff? See. Oh shit! What if Tim? What if it what turns if all out this time? all the Ned Jones movies, it's actually you snap to, and it's just been a hairless Wookiee getting dosed <laughs> by Charles Manson. I thought you were gonna say Indiana was tripping at LSD all these all this time. That's why he thinks he sees supernatural stuff. Well, I was gonna start there, and I decided just to tie everything together with right. Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, Han Solo. It's all the same guy. Let's get away from this show. The show. Yeah. The show we talked right. about. Power pack. At the end of the show, we had quiz time. I'll call it the Bib Co- Co- Seti Q and A. Bring quiz. Answer the quizzes. Do you like quizzes, John? I do love quizzes. I'll call it Seti Q and A. Bring quizzes. The Bib Co- I love quizzes. Answer the Bib Co- I'll call it theme song. Mm, no. And the, there's two questions always the same. What character from this show or movie would have a podcast? Which character would have a spinoff? But we've started yep. switching up the first question, and I showed a bunch yeah. of. And George came up with the first question this week. I was under the belief <clears throat> my question was the second question. Oh, do you want it to be second? I don't care. Here's the thing. Who, listeners. Who would have a podcast? Listeners. Wait, wait. No, I want to tell the listeners something. Okay, you tell them. I want you to know that this quiz, this isn't a quiz. This is like more of a take-home exam. <laughs> Tim sends out a list of questions with instructions. Three. On which to, three. But there's a lot of questions on there. You have to choose one. And Tim will write out, like, these things that he comes up with, he writes fucking novels. And I'm going to also tell you this. I had, I actually this time did my homework and wrote an elaborate series of responses to this that incorporated my never before until now read on the air letter that I wrote like five months ago explaining (laughs) the ins and outs of He-Man. And what happens last week? They finally read He-Man. So all this work I did. Read your letter. Is shot to hell. Sorry. Yeah. Just fill in. All right. So just fill in. <laughs> I'm going to fill in Wookiee. Fill right, your, go. Your... First question. <clears throat> Tim, you go first question. I'll ask the second question. Okay. You want to do the, the podcast one first? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll do it in the order because you have stuff for it. All right. My question was <laughs> the one I chose. What's going on? Which of these characters? What? <laughs> I'm asking myself what's going on. Go ahead. <laughs> the, the question was which of these characters featured on the show would most likely become a superhero? Now, you might be like, George, I thought these were all superheroes. I'm like, oh, no. They have no names. No superhero names, no superhero costumes. They barely have powers. So which of these characters featured in the show would become a superhero? And you want... Tim, you want to go first? You want me to go first? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I don't write novels, but (laughs) have a seat. All right. (laughs) Yes, they're... Sitting down. I'm going to say it's Dr. Morbius. Mobius. Oh, he, Mobius when he was given his medallion back, he was free from his curse and could leave that haunted house that was his prison. He became Orson Welles' man. <laughs> Orson Welles' man traveled the country, instructing people about what wines they could not drink before their time, oh. and was always on the hunt for a mysterious adversary called Roseblood. Rosebud. <laughs> Wait, people would no. People... Let's make him Doctor Morbius, <laughs> and it's Roseblood. Okay, he's Roseblood. <laughs> People would offer to help find Rosebud or Blood, but he would tell Rosebud. tell people nothing about his, this adversary and leave town right before breakfast before any, anyone could ask any more questions. Hmm. As this takes place in the Marvel Universe, he eventually teamed up okay. with Daddy Longlegs, who had decided to turn his life around and be a hero. And if you don't know, Daddy Longlegs is a very tall, skinny person. Together they solved crimes while looking for the mysterious Rosebud. They became known as Big and Tall. Uh, I'm not sure what Daddy Longlegs' powers were. 
Guess he could just teabag, teabag uh, anyone. Doesn't he was just uh, Daddy Longlegs was a diminutive dancer who stole pin particles from Bill Foster, Jeez. the second giant man, but they were tainted. So instead of growing big like the way Ant Man or Giant Man does, he just became very tall and skinny. He was okay. like fifteen foot tall, and his powers <laughs> were. He was tall. George, I told you his powers were he could teabag anyone. And he would Here teabag you. You're coming with the real answers. Well, that's what he did. He <laughs> first appears in Spider Woman. He's written, created by Anna Senti. George. And wouldn't you know it, this is true. And he drops Trow and fucking teabags everyone. Wow. Yeah. That uh, did not happen. So, But this show, wait. Yeah. Oh, it's goes Here's on. part two. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm ready. It's one more sentence. Okay. They didn't last long, as Orson Welles' man was always bragging about the time he married Rita Hayworth. It was Rita Hayworth this, Rita Hayworth that. He even had naked pictures of her. He would show Daddy Longlegs, and Daddy Longlegs was like, hey, that's not cool. I'm out of here. And that's, that's, oh, I forgot. To, that's a, it. That, their show was called um, Big and Tall. Yeah. You said that. Ba-dum-bum. Wait. Wait. What? But um, wait, so the man whose main method of attacking was teabagging opponents mm-hmm. was put off by pictures of naked Rita Hayward. Well, yeah, a guy showing you pictures of his naked ex-wife. You're like, ah. Follow-up question. Um, Rita Hayworth was married to Orson Welles. She, yeah, he was, yeah. Wow, he also dated Eartha Kitt. Did he? I didn't know that. Yeah, that guy did really good for himself. Yep. Way to go, Orson Welles. Yep. Um, okay, so I was, uh, as I mentioned, I had to rewrite all my answers, so I'm just going off the top of my head here. I'm actually going to say the one of them, because I was going to say Dr. Mobius, but I'm not going to match what you did. Uh, I'm going to say Katie Power becomes a superhero. But She's the youngest. She's more of like a, she's the youngest one, the one who actually takes a life in this episode, uh, the one who is staring at two other children, theorizing, <laughs> theoretically to kill them. She becomes a grim and gritty sort of Punisher type character. Cool. Goes around and uses her powers of disintegration to kill people, and she also, uh, yeah, that's it. Well, what age does this that's become? What what age ha- did the, uh, her parents killed when she's twelve and suddenly she's a vigilante? Oh, she kills them in episode two. Oh, okay. of this. <laughs> she kills her parents. She just they make her go to bed or eat some peas or something, and she fucking kills them. <laughs> she kills the rest of the powers. It's kind of like Firestarter. She's just on this rampage across the country, okay. murdering. So you know what? It's less that she becomes a superhero. Yeah, it sounds like it's a, once she becomes the greatest threat the world has ever sounds known. Sounds like Firestarter. Yeah, she kills Iron Man. She mm. just fucking straight up murders Tony. Oh, that's Star. right. This takes place in the Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah. The only person she leaves alive is Daddy Longlegs because she's amused by him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Who from this terrible show would most likely have a podcast? <laughs> Boy, that's a little bit of your tip. What? You can't say it's terrible. It's for kids. I know. Watch it was it. for kids. It was terrible. It was terrible. It was for kids. But who would have a podcast? Right. Do you want me? You want to go first? Uh, I would say, see. Now this was all tying in. I was going to read my letter now. I would say, sorry. looking at the t- <laughs> looking at the ages, I would say that Jack was probably the right age to have had a few Masters of the Universe figures. Okay. And he has a podcast where he goes on other people's podcasts <laughs> and writes long rambling letters explaining the history of the Masters of the Universe to them. Nobody wants it. Nobody cares about it. But he gives it anyway. <laughs> to any any podcast we'll write into? Any po- I mean like he'll be like on a serial pillar. Like, he'll be like – they'll be talking about Adnan Syed. And he's like, you know, Adnan Syed <laughs> has a lot in common with Web Store for Masters of the Universe. And that you – know, and like he just – there's nothing in common. He just goes nuts. <laughs> That's what he does. He talks about Matt. He's definitely a Masters Universe fan. And he goes on podcast talking about it. Okay. All right. That was good. Thank you. And yours? Podcast. Who from this movie would have a podcast? I'd say Eddie. Eddie was the friend who wanted to sneak into the oh, haunted house. And he smacked his friend in the head every chance Multiple he Multiple times. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the episode, of there's a lot of blood on that kid's head. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, all through high school, he was that annoying kid who always wanted to do scary or stupid stuff. He would mm. sneak into haunted houses, throw snowballs at cars, steal candy bars, sneak into old man Carrie's house while old man Carrie was asleep on the front porch and steal his beer. 
He'd put a tack on the teacher's chair. He'd throw cherry nice. bombs into the school toilets. He'd sneak Ooh. into old man Carey's house while old man Carey was in the hospital getting his gallbladder removed and steal his opium. He'd steal baby Jesus from the church <laughs> nativity scene during the holiday, some people call Christmas. And he'd put the baby Jesus in back in the back seat of old man Carey's car while old man Carey is down at the cemetery pissing on his brother's grave. He'd rearrange, oh, shit. He'd rearrange the books at the people at the library so people couldn't find the novel Scarlet by Alexandra uh-huh. Ripley, which was a very popular sequel to Gone with the Wait, Wind back then. The sequel to Gone with the Wind, yes. nice. <laughs> then, then it would be back to Old Man Carey's house. He'd sneak into the basement and hook up the hot water to the cold water pipes or steal Old Man Carey's record collection of Bob Newhart albums. Thus, mm. when Old Man Carey died at the ripe old age of 92, Eddie suddenly felt he had no purpose in life and even felt perhaps he should have been nicer to Old Man Carey. So... Eddie grew old and friendless, and he created a, a very delusional, <laughs> sad, tormented life. And uh, he created a podcast to tell the world an alternate story about himself and his best childhood friend, Old Man Carey. He told stories about how, how Old Man Carey would teach him how to steal cars or how to jump on a freight train, get a ride, and even how to hijack an airplane. Uh, this podcast <laughs> was called, can you guess what it's called? Seti Bimka. Planes, trains, and automobiles. So. I hate you. Are you kidding? <laughs> All right. The show, the, that was show, a, that the was... show ended suddenly when Eddie was arrested for digging up old man Carrie's grave and stealing the body. Oh, man. <laughs> what? I, I was like, the, I enjoyed the progression of the old man Carrie's. Like, that was a real journey we went on with old man Carrie. Yeah, he's nice. Starts off just the beer, then we learned he's into opium. <laughs> Then we learned he's into Bob Newhart. It kept getting harder and harder. <laughs> Pissing believe. on his brother's grave. I'm like, there's definitely going to be some more desecration going here. And there was. That was. Oh, okay. You were happy. I like that. You were happy. I, fin- I was very happy with that. Finished with was, uh, grave yeah. taking and body desecration. Can I ask a side question, though? What happens to Harlan, his friend who he keeps repeatedly smacking in the head in this universe? Oh, he probably went on to have a great life. Oh, okay. I figured he killed him. Living well is the best revenge, right? Yeah, nice. All right. You know which president well played, has probably had his his grave desecrated the most? Donald Trump. I don't Trump. mean desecrated. Yeah. Well, we're talking about past, <laughs> not future. Oh, I'm saying that <laughs> I was looking into the not too distant future. When I say desecrated, uh, they didn't do anything to the body, but <clears throat> but Lincoln was was, uh, you list, was moved you a list, lot. Oh, really? Like Lincoln was buried somewhere and they moved it, and then they were worried about it and they locked it up. I think that moved several times in, over the years. Was that because he was one of the undead because he was a vampire yeah. hunter? Mm-hmm. That's a movie, right? It is. Is he a vampire hunter or a zombie hunter? I never watched it, but. Yeah, I didn't either. It's one of those movies like one of these days I probably will, but I haven't hit that level yet. No. I got to be really You're lonely into werewolf and really movies. sad. I am. If there was like Abraham Lincoln werewolf fighter, I'd be all over that movie. All right. What's the last Sesquiki. question? Who would have a spinoff TV show of this TV show? <laughs> uh, it better not be Jaws related. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be Quint. Um, <clears throat> who would? There's not a lot of characters to choose from here. Maybe you should go first. Tim. Okay. Well, it's the same as the other one. All right. Just a different universe. Obviously, Dr. Morbius. Who is, in fact, Orson right. Welles? What is his story? All Why right. is his house filled with skeletons? Why is there a strange fake All monsters right. in here? Um, the only house scarier than this house was Old Man Carey's house. <laughs> so this took place in the 90s. So I'm going with the satanic panic reasoning and say this house is a satanic cult meeting place at night. Got, that's why it's got the skeletons and the guillotines. They obviously okay. use the guillotine for chopping off the heads of all those baby Jesuses that they would steal from the nativity scenes that Eddie didn't al- already steal them from. Oh, so this was a thing for him. It wasn't just that one time. <laughs> yes. He just, all right. This, well, this town that Power Pack lived in, it had the most nativity scenes per capita in the U.S. of any other huh. city. Thus, they were chopping off about 10 plastic baby Jesus heads a night. And Dr. Morbius was not dead, but simply, but he simply did not come out during the day. Mm. He had a he had a light machine to fool the kids with. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, no, wait, wait. wait. I, I forgot what I wrote. <laughs> Finally, the, the town catches on to what he's doing. They chase him out of town and he goes on the run. And while he's on the run, 
he meets up with a guy named Dell who sells shower Del. curtain rings. Dell and Dr. Mm-hmm. Morbius are both headed the same way, so they travel together, even though Dell loses Morbius's credit card, talks incessantly during plane rides, and eventually sets Morbius's car rental car on fire. But still, oh my god, is there a scene where they lay in bed together and he accidentally puts his legs yeah. hand between his legs? Yeah, okay. But they still go from town to town, stealing baby Jesuses from nativity scenes and chopping their heads off. I forget wow. why do they do this? They need some motivation. Which is hard for the eleven months out of the year that is not the Christmas mm-hmm. season. But that's what the show is all about. It struggles to find nativity scenes during the non Christmas holiday while traveling by car and plane and trains with his annoying companion Dell. And can you guess what this show is called? Um, uh, uh, not um, <laughs> the search for Bigfoot. It's called Highway to Heaven. Nice. That's actually pretty good. Um, I'm going to give the character of the spinoff series. I've already said how Katie becomes a mass murderer. That was pretty awesome. But I'm going to go with Harlan. Okay. The uh, the kid that Eddie smacks repeatedly. <laughs> okay. You you did say Harlan's best revenge was living well, but here's the problem. Okay. This is dark. All right. All his repeated blows to the head gave Harlan a contusion. Oh no. Yeah, and he. <laughs> That's worse. That's almost as bad as a contusion. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? And. <laughs> Did my jo- <laughs> did my bad joke travel in time back a few seconds? <laughs> and you heard it. <laughs> no, because it could threesh Uh Yeah, and uh, yeah, he just dies. <laughs> That's your story? <laughs> does does Dr. Mobius I... raise his spirit from the dead? I... No. <laughs> okay. Uh, is there anything else we need to say? Let me just see if someone emailed. Ooh. Ooh, I would be so excited if there was actually a letter to read. No, there's not. After my letter, there's not. <laughs> God. I tell Mr. Cablasto every week, write us a letter. And he doesn't. I, no, I have written you at least two or three letters since then. <laughs> but they're just like, hey, you didn't read my letter. That's what they say. I know. Read, read, why don't we read, actually, you read, why don't we read that letter? Really? I want to read that letter. Okay. Yeah, I want to read one of my letters. Here, I can look it up myself. <laughs> There's two is all. I'll read all it. Right. You want me to read it? No, I want to read it. I want to read it. Let, if there's two, how about you read one I read the other? Okay. I'm reading the one from all November right. 9th. Okay. Hi, Seti Bimkanots. I was listening. Nice. That's a I good one. I was listening to your most recent episode, Teenagers from Space, when I was delighted to hear my letter was going to be read aloud. Then it was not. <laughs> that made me sad. Your pal. <laughs> New York Times bestselling author, George O'Connor. Uh, I was sad, Tim. I was definitely sad that day. I How know. do you feel about that? Uh, are, you, are you being serious? Yeah. How does it make you feel that you made me I'm sad? Always, I'm always feeling guilty and, and terrible. Yeah. So, so I feel half guilty that you feel bad, and, and the other half says, don't feel guilty. You're being, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a good gag. If it makes you feel better, <laughs> I don't really feel bad. If it's funny, I, if it's uh, funny, I will hurt my friend's feelings. That's all that matters. It's funny. Prior to the episode airing, I couldn't have told you what that letter was about. I knew there was a letter because you mentioned it week after week after week. I didn't know what it was about anymore. I didn't know it was He-Man. I don't know what I wrote. I was probably <laughs> drunk. All right. Well, we got through that show. Nailed it. All right. Okay, we're done. But next week, I looked this up and now I forgot. Damn, I found a, a movie yeah, that fit into the superhero teenage thing. I'll tell you. All right. Let's <laughs> do both. You know what? Who I'm going to tell you right now what? while George right. drinks water. We're going to watch Chopping Mall. That's amazing, Tim. I can't wait to watch that episode of whatever you just mentioned. <laughs> okay. We're done. All right. My God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for filling in oh. for... Thanks. Oh, well, you I can, hope, yeah, where, where else can we hear you, George? Go ahead. Oh, uh, so uh, my my normal podcast, the uh, Hypothetical Island podcast, currently on a bit of a hiatus oh. for the holidays. Okay. So uh, we're recording some episodes, but we're going to be relaunching a new in the new year. Okay. And you can also find me uh, 
under most rocks, behind shrubs, Jeez. any dark crevice, really, some specter of me will be lurking. If you could shrink down, so, you would yeah. climb down a bathroom drain. I would climb a bathroom drain. I'd pull out all the retainers. I would go under doors of houses. I would fight rats because <laughs> I'm just that sort of guy. You get stuck in a drawer. Does that happen? No, I just just saying that. Oh, okay. It makes me think of oh, Ant Man. Where's Riffin? Ant Man would not have any problem if he didn't shrink down on all those old covers where he's like, "Oh no, someone's going to step on me. Oh no, I'm stuck in an ant farm." <laughs> it's just oh, like I have a stupid power. <laughs> if you wouldn't shrink down, these things wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, man, just stay big. It's all fine. You don't need to be little. Nobody needs you to be little. All right. Tim. Okay. I we think got this it. is a great idea. Okay. Let's right. go. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> See everybody next Bye. week. Bye. See you next week. Seti Binko is a podcast by Tim Hamilton and John Kelly. Produced by Miss Lee. Music by Tim Hamilton. This has been a Pity Party Line production. Party Line. It's a party line. I remember there there was one episode where one of the Charlie's Angels infiltrates a female prison and there was like I to my memory like a five minute scene of her being hosed in her eyes. I'm like <laughs> Of course. I get why people watch this. <laughs> it was it was it went on for a very long time. <laughs> I'm like, oh oh now I Yeah, it's not he could. <laughs> but yeah, Hulk uh, That was every episode of good. Charlie's Angels. I don't know if you realize it. They just it probably they hosed was, them down yeah. for five minutes. That was it's they like, worked woo, it into every now plot. They, now now, they, now skip in place. Yeah. Now jump rope. All right, excellent. Yes. <laughs> they even infiltrated a crooked nunnery once and they still hosed them down their underwear. Every episode they worked it. That could be true. <laughs> that could be true. That could all be true.